Uh, let's start with Tim, uh, Teofimo Lopez's dominant win over Josh Taylor. Um, what did you What did you make of that? Yeah, I kind of want to give you some quick uh, analysis on Teofimo Lopez. Like, you know, this guy really skyrocketed out of nowhere. I think it was like 22, 23. He beat Vasily Lomachenko. And I want to say this was during the COVID time, so maybe three years. And he hadn't really done anything ever since. He lost to Combosa as a surprise. Uh, he had a, a couple of sluggish fights after that. And then now he's going into a very intriguing bout against Josh Taylor at 140. He went up from 135 to 140. Uh, and we were like kind of like wondering, okay, what's going to happen with Teofimo Lopez? Turned out he could, you know, he's, but the crazy part, like I was going to say, turn back the clock. He's still very young, like 25, whatever it is. But he became, again, the guy we all thought he was going to be a, a star boxer. And he, he just really picked apart Josh Taylor. And he's already, again, in my mind, a top 140. It's just like, what happened to this guy? And that's where I, I kind of want to take it there. Like, I think for Teofimo Lopez, is more the head games, a lot of pressure. When you're that young and you're, at, you're that successful right away and you're, and, and, and you're always going through the grind and you, you're working out, you're going to have your bad days. You're going to become sluggish because you already went to the mountaintop so quickly. Maybe you're not training as hard. And then when you're not training as hard you're, and you have a sluggish fight, you get criticized. And that gets in your head. And you try to make enemies out of everybody who's making a, making bad opinions about you. And instead of using the motivation, it's bringing you down. And I think that's what the funk that Tio Fimalopo was going through because we always knew he had good skills. What happened with Combosas, I don't know. I think he got too, got too big-headed at one point. Uh, and then after that, I don't know what happened. So he, he kind of – he's uh, unpredictable sometimes. But to, what he did to Josh Taylor, I'm not saying Josh Taylor was a he's a great fighter. He was a really good fighter and he just picked him apart. So uh, and now but now he's contemplating retirement. Supposedly, I think it's kind of a, a, a bidding war or not a bidding war, but he's trying to convince top rank and ESPN to give him more money. I don't know if Teofimo Lopez could command as much money he's asking for, but he is a good fighter. And maybe the retirement route supposedly will be the way he gets his money. But very impressive and good for him to come back. At 25 years old, like, I don't think anybody's going to buy it, don't you? For like uh, retirement? Oh, yeah. That's the thing. It's like, what are you doing here? And, and then also, like, like you're not Ryan Garcia or Javante Tech Davis. Like, like you say, he's kind of like Devin Haney. Like, if you, David Haney tried that, like, dude, you're not getting Like, he wanted he wanted nine figures. That's $100 million. Like, you're not going to get that. Like, but he is really underpaid. Like, he makes good money for ESPN. But maybe try a different route. Um... Obviously, uh, we've been talking a lot about like judges and everything. What did you think about the, they were good? Uh, yeah, lately the boxing judges have been getting lucky because they luckily get the right winner. But these scorecards are crazy. Like if if uh, Josh Taylor would have won the top round, I think it's a majority draw, and Taylor gets to keep his belt. So that would have been crazy. So I, I don't get it with boxing. It's like I feel like judges are probably like okay. Let me give a round here. Oh, no, if I don't get, score this one, the 12th round for this guy, it's going to be chaos. They think about the public scrutiny. I don't know. Uh, but I'm tired of talking about the judges. They always get it wrong, but this time they're okay. Um. So what's next? So what do you think is next for him? I don't know. I think I think David Haney makes a lot of sense. But I think because Devin Haney is also with ESPN top rank, he doesn't want to make it easy for them. He wants to go into a bidding war, maybe, or even get a Gervonta or a Ryan Garcia because they make more money and he wants more money. But I, I think Devin Haney against him makes a lot of sense, but we'll see what happens. By the way, did you see uh, Stevenson? Is that his name? Uh, Shakur Stevenson? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was at the same party, I think, as uh, Devin Haney. Oh, and yeah? Uh, yeah, they were at a party together. I think it was Devin Haney. And he put on the, on like, he, they were at a party and I guess on a banner. He put they put they lit up signed the signed, signed the contract already, and uh, and everything. So it, I guess, I guess like I think it was Devin Haney that he saw. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So okay. Shakur did the okay. did the sign. Huh? Shakur Stevenson did the sign. Yeah, like he put like a like there was like a billboard, you know, where they put like yeah uh, performing next or this or that. He put sign <laughs> the contract. Yeah. So, no. Well, Stevenson Haney and. Lopez are all under top rank ESPN. So those are those are fights right there for those guys. But I think Haney is the one that could either go down and stay at 135 or go to 140. So he has a lot of options for him. So we'll see what he does. But that, that'll be a very good fight, too. That'll be interesting. 